Welcome to Prophecy Countdown. I'm Pastor Ken. And today's message is number 434, This Generation. Our Wednesday video and audio prophecy updates premiere at 11 a.m. We welcome your comments, your questions, and any ideas you may have for future episodes. Just email us at prophecycountdownpodcast at gmail.com. So let's get to today's teaching, number 434, This Generation. I want to speak to you today on a subject that has stirred confusion and even controversy over many years. And it's the phrase Jesus uses in Matthew 24, verse 34, where he says, this generation will by no means pass away till all these things take place. Critics of the Bible have pointed to this voice as an example of what they call a failed prophecy. They argue that Jesus promised the end of the world within his lifetime, the people that he was speaking to, And since that didn't happen, they say the Bible cannot be trusted. So I'll read you the passage. This passage is just four verses in the 24th chapter of Matthew. Uh, However, the context is always important. Remember, context is key. And I, I could read the entire Olivet Discourse, but I can read you just the few verses prior to this parable, this parable of the fig tree, and we'll get a really good idea about the context, what Jesus is actually speaking of. Uh, It starts off in verse 29. Jesus says, immediately after the tribulation of those days, the sun will not be darkened and the moon will not give its light. The stars will fall from heaven and the powers of the heavens will be shaken. Then the sign of the Son of Man will appear in heaven, and then all of the tribes of the earth will mourn, and they will see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. And he will send his angels with a great sound of trumpets, and they will gather together his elect from the four winds from one end of heaven to the other. So This is the context. This is what Jesus was talking about. We should have a pretty good idea of of what Jesus was describing. In, In my Bible, likely yours, this entire section has a topic. And at the top of this topic, at the top of this section, it says, the coming of the Son of Man. It's in bold letters. Jesus begins by saying, immediately after the tribulation of those days. Now, the tribulation could be a little bit of trouble, But you don't have to be a scholar to understand that Jesus is referring to a very specific tribulation period, that which the Apostle John describes in the book of Revelation. I'm here to tell you that this argument comes from a misunderstanding of the passage and of the prophetic timeline that God has uh, has pointed out through his prophets in the Bible. We need to look uh, deeper at what Jesus meant, however, when he said this generation and how it relates to the signs he gave, especially what's known as the parable of the fig tree. So let's dig into this a little deeper. I'll read the actual parable of the fig tree. This is in Matthew chapter 24, verses 32 to 35. And this is where Jesus makes the reference, this generation, which is the title of my message today. Jesus says, now learn this parable from the fig tree. When its branch has already become tender and puts forth leaves, you know that summer is near. So you also, when you see all these things, know that it is near at the doors. Assuredly, I say to you, this generation will by no means pass away till all these things take place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will by no means pass pass away. See, Jesus begins by saying, learn this parable from the fig tree. Now, the fig tree is an important symbol uh, in Scripture. Often it represents Israel. You can see this in uh, Hosea chapter 9, verse 10, for example, where Israel is compared to the early fruit on a fig tree. And then there's Joel uh, chapter 1, verse 7, which speaks of God's judgment on Israel as if the fig tree had been stripped bare. So when Jesus speaks about the fig tree becoming tender and putting forth leaves, he's not giving a lesson in agriculture. He's pointing to Israel, and he's using this parable to identify Israel. And we know from history that just as the fig tree goes through cycles of dormancy and renewal, Israel also went through a long period of desolation. 
after the great diaspora, when the Jewish people were scattered across the earth following the destruction of the temple in AD 70, Israel became like a barren, dormant fig tree. The land became desolate. The people were scattered, and it looked like God's judgment had left Israel for dead. But as we know, God was not finished with Israel. Jesus said that the fig tree would once again become tender. He was speaking of the rebirth of Israel. And we, see what, we saw what happened in 1948 when against all odds, Israel was reborn as a nation. So let's take a look at this connection between the day of the Lord, Jesus returning, and the fig tree. Jesus said that when you see the fig tree putting forth its leaves, we should know that summer is near. And what does he mean by summer? Well, he's pointing to the acknowledgement that just as we know that there are certain signs when one season ends and another one is beginning, so should we know when we see the signs of a fulfillment of this prophecy. We are seeing the events that will soon lead to his return. You see, the rebirth of Israel wasn't just a political event. It was a prophetic event. Israel's restoration as a nation is like a fig tree uh, blooming again after a long winter, a sign that we are nearing the time of the day of the Lord, the final period of human history just before Christ's return. And here's what's remarkable. Remarkable. Jesus is telling us that we are that generation. We are the generation that has witnessed Israel's rebirth and reformation. The tender fig tree is putting forth its leaves. And Jesus said, this generation will not pass away until all these things take place. So what did Jesus mean by this generation? Well, let's unpack it for a moment. Uh, for our, There are different ways to understand the word generation in, in the Bible. In some ways, a generation refers to a specific length of time. It could be 30 years, uh, the typical time that a person has children of their own. It could be 40 years. In the case of Israel, wandering in the wilderness for a generation, which was 40 years. And in Genesis, Moses refers to Israel's time in Egypt as 400 years, and then he calls it four generations, indicating that that generation was identified as a, with a span of 100 years. But here's another way the word generation can be used. Jesus may not be necessarily be talking about a specific number of years, but talking about a specific group of people, a generation not defined by the length of their lives, but by the events they witness. So when Jesus says this generation will not pass away, he's likely referring to the generation that witnesses not just the rebirth of Israel, but all these signs, including the development of the Jew Jewish nation, this Jewish nation that has not yet turned their attention and affection to Jesus. The generation includes those who witness the rebirth, the political unrest, the challenges we have seen in the peace process, and the extreme polarization with students on our college campuses that are embracing the terrorists and want Israel removed from the river to the sea, despite Israel being a democracy, uh, an alliance of, uh, a great ally, uh, ally of the United States, and also one that supports our values. The people who see these things happen will be the generation that will not pass away before his return. You see, we are that generation. We've seen Israel restored, and we're watching prophecy unfold before our very eyes. Just consider what this generation has witnessed, what has happened in just this last century. On May 14, 1948, Israel became a nation, again, a, a miracle in itself. In 1967, during the Six-Day War, Israel captures Jerusalem, fulfilling another important part of prophecy. Then the Yom Kippur War, in October of 1973, when Egypt and Syria, two of Israel's ancient enemies, you can read about them all through the Bible, launched a coordinated and surprise attack on Israel. Then almost 50 years later to the day, on October 7th, a terrorist attack on Israel from Gaza and the ongoing conflict involving not only Hamas, but Hezbollah and now Iran. We are the generation that is witnessing this ongoing conflict 
and global tension surrounding Israel, the fig tree, growing and becoming an important national player. We have witnessed Israel's scientists introduce advances in science, in agriculture, and biotechnology, and global innovation. Today, the world's attention remains fixed on this small nation state, just as the Bible predicted. These events are not random. They are the unfolding of God's prophetic plan. This generation will not pass away before all these things come to pass. So what exactly are we waiting for? What is the next event on God's prophetic calendar? Well, the next event on God's prophetic calendar is his return, the return of Jesus and the day of the Lord. But let me clarify something. Jesus' return happens actually in two stages. First, Jesus will come as the bridegroom to take his bride, the church, out of this world. This is what we call the rapture. It marks the end of the church age, which has lasted about 2,000 years. Then, after the rapture, we enter into a period known as the day of the Lord, a time of judgment and tribulation that will culminate in Jesus' second coming. He will return, not as a suffering servant, but as a conquering king to establish his reign, his kingdom on earth, and he'll reign for a thousand years. Now, the rapture, the first part of Jesus' return, is what's called imminent. It could happen at any moment. The second coming of Jesus, his touching down on the Mount of Olives, is not imminent, and it is approaching. You see, both the Apostle Paul and the Apostle John gave us a very detailed account of the events surrounding the second coming. In 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, the Apostle Paul is giving a detailed account of the revealing of the Antichrist. He calls him the lawless one. Verse 7 of chapter 2 of 2 Thessalonians, Paul says, He who now restrains will do so until he is taken out of the way, and then the lawless one will be revealed, whom the Lord will consume with the breath of his mouth and destroy with the brightness of his coming. Jesus will return. My friends, the restrainer is removed, and that is the church and the indwell with the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. The lawless one is then revealed. And the lawless one is the Antichrist, who has a very short reign, uh, no more than seven years. And then the Lord consumes him with the breath of his mouth. And when, do, when does this Paul say this happens? When? With the brightness of his coming. Christ's second coming. You see, we are a part of that generation that has seen the rebirth of Israel. And prophetically, we will be the generation that sees the return of the bridegroom for his church. I encourage you today to take this parable of the fig tree seriously. We may not know the day or the hour, but we do know the season. And the season is now. Jesus is coming.